All right, everybody, welcome to Math with Grace. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be working through Geometry Book 1008, Section 2, Area and Volume of Circles. First thing we need to talk about when we are talking about the area and volume of circles is we need to talk about circumference. If we have a circle, their circumference, well, the definition of circumference is the limit of the perimeters of the inscribed regular polygons and that it's always a positive number. But circumference is basically if we walked around a circle, how long would it take us to walk around? How far would we go? All right. And the formula for, for circumference is 2 pi radius or the diameter times pi. Okay, which walks us into theorem 8.7 that tells us the ratio of the circumferences to the diameter is the same for all circles. So the ratio of their circumference to the diameter is the same for every circle, and that ratio is pi. Now looking at some of our homework problems, we need to pay attention to the directions. Okay, I know that's an odd concept, but we need to pay attention to the directions. And when they say find an exact circumference, they do not want you to replace pi with any number because the value, the numerical value for pi extends on and on forever, amen. There is no exact number. Therefore, when we find a circumference with an exact or an exact circumference, we want to leave it with the pi in place. So if we look at problem 2.1, it tells us that the radius equals five inches. So what is our circumference? Well, using the formula two pi r, we put in our five inches. So our circumference equals two pi times five, okay? Therefore, our circumference is two times five, which is 10 pi inches. All right, let's look at 2.2. 2.2 tells us that our radius equals 7 inches. So plugging it in, okay, substituting it into the formula, we've got 2 pi 7 inches. So our circumference is 14 pi inches. So please pay attention to when they're asking for an exact circumference if not, then they will actually give you the value which they would like you to use for pi. So if we look at problem 2.7, these problems tell us to, that pi is equal to 3.14, okay? So if we look at 2.7, we have a radius of 4 inches. So now we're going to put this into our formula, except this time we're substituting not just the radius, but also pi. So our circumference is going to equal 2 times pi times 4, all right? We can get out our calculator, plug it all in. Oh, this is inches, by the way. Plug it all in and to find out that our circumference is 25.1 inches. If we look now at problem number 13, they're asking us to find the radius if we're given a circumference. So now we're working backwards. We're told that the circumference is equal to 12 pi inches, and they want us to solve for the radius. So we're going to work backwards here. So we know that our 12 pi inches is equal to 2 pi r, right? We divide both sides by 2 pi, okay? They cancel here, and we're left with just our radius. Here, our pi's are gone. And here we can reduce our 12 divided by 2 is going to be 6 inches. So this is how we solve backwards if given a circumference instead of um, just the radius. And that's problem number 13. All right. Let's look at problem number 220, a story problem. It reads, find the radius of a rolling wheel. So we have a wheel that's rolling along, okay? If the wheel makes six revolutions, so it's gonna turn six times, and it does that in a distance of 66 feet, okay? 
So our wheel has rolled six revolutions, which is six times round or six circumferences, okay? And to do those six circumferences took it 66 feet. They want us to find the radius using pi equals 22 over seven. Okay, now we're switching it up a bit. We're not doing exact, but we also don't have a decimal. They want us to use the fraction that pi equals 22 over seven. That being said, the first thing we want to figure out is how far did it travel in one revolution? If it traveled 66 feet in six revolutions, if we take 66 divided by six, that tells us that one revolution was 11 feet, okay? Knowing that one revolution was 11 feet, we can, we know then that that is equal to our circumference and we can come back up to our formula and substitute that in. So we know that 11 feet equals two pi radius, okay? And I know you're thinking, well, what happened to my pi over here? Well, it doesn't exist at this point. So we need to work it out, right? Let's substitute in our 22 um, over seven here. So we've got 11 feet equals two times 22 over seven radius. Now to get rid of our 22 over seven, cause it's not a pretty number, right? It's kind of fussy. So to get rid of that, we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, we can cancel out fractions when we multiply by the reciprocal. What we do on one side of the equal sign, we've got to do on the other. So we're gonna multiply both sides by 22 over seven. Okay, this cancels out all of that and we're left with two times the radius over here. And then here we can reduce, right? Because 11 goes into 11 one time and 11 goes into 22 two times. So on this side, we're now left with seven over two feet, okay? Now, instead of dividing by two, since we've got a fraction on this side, I'm going to multiply both sides now by one half, which is exactly the same thing, okay? Just like we did before, one half is the reciprocal of two. This is basically two over one. One half is the reciprocal. So my twos are now gone and I'm left with just a radius, which is what we're solving for, okay? Over here, we can't cancel anything out. So we're just gonna multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. And therefore we know that our radius is 7 fourths feet or one and three fourths feet. And that's how we solve problem number 20. That's enough about circumference for right now. Let's start our talk about the area of a circle. And theorem 8.8 .8 on page 31 states that the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. So if we look at problem 225, they're asking us to find the area of a circle using pi as 3.14 if our radius was six. So the area of our circle is going to equal 3.14 times the radius squared. Now remember, this is not six times two, this is two sixes, so six times six, okay? And when we plug this into our calculator, we learn that the area of this circle is 113.04 square units. Now, they don't actually give us what those square units are, but we need to know that when we're talking about area, that our answer is always going to be something squared, okay? Inches squared, feet squared, yards squared, I don't know, miles squared. When we talk about areas, it's always gonna be squared because here we squared this. And if this was six inches or feet or yards or miles, we're taking six feet times six feet, which gives us six feet squared, okay? So areas will always be a squared unit. All right, let's take a look at 231. Now in this section, they say find the area the exact area of a circle having given a circumference. Well, they're telling us that our circumference is eight pi. Well, what do we know about circumferences, okay? 
for our area, we need pi r squared, right? This is a formula for our area. Do we have that information here? Well, we know that the circumference is equal to 2 pi r, right? So if our circumference is 8 pi, then this is represented here and here. So that we know that 2r is equal to 8. We can divide by 2 to find out that our radius is 4. Now we have everything we need to come back up and find our area. So the area of our circle, and remember we're looking for exact area, so we're not going to um, get rid of that pi. The pi stays there. Area of our circle is pi times the radius squared. Here's our 4, so we've got two 4s, four times 4. So the area of this circle is 16 pi square units, okay? Because we always have square units with an area, and that's how you find an area from when given a circumference. Now we're going to take a look at a story problem involving the area of our circle, okay? And this story problem reads, find the area of a circle circumscribed about an equilateral triangle. So we should all remember that circumscribed means drawn around, right? An equilateral triangle whose sides are 18 inches long. So we know that the sides of this triangle are 18 inches long. And I'm going to draw the triangle outside of the circle for now just to give myself room to right here with this pen kind of needs a lot of space. So they want us to find the area of a circle. Well, to find the area of a circle, we need the radius, right? The radius is what we need to find the area of the circle. They don't give us a, a number they want us to use for pi, so we are just going to find the exact number with pi included. Okay. To find this area, we need to find the radius. And as we've studied in the last couple sections, that's, this is also called the radius of this triangle, right? Because it comes from here to here. Except rather than the um, altitude, we need to find the apothem, right? Well, let's try and work that out. So we know, first of all, if we have a triangle, an equilateral triangle, that each of the angles created here, if I were to draw these all in, right, with the radius, because this is the radius of our triangle, each of these angles equals 120 degrees. So when we split this one right here to form our right triangle, we just split a 120 degree angle in half so now that we know that this angle here is 60 degrees, okay? So now we know that this is a, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay? And we can use all the properties of a 30, 60, 90 triangle to solve for the different parts that we need. That being said, we've split this side in half. So we know that this section of our triangle, and here, let's draw it outside of this big triangle, okay, is 9, okay? This angle right here is our 60 degree angle, okay? And the side opposite our 60 degree angle is 9. Well, what is our relationship between the long side of our 30, 60, 90 and the short side? Well, the relationship is that the long side is equal to the short side times the square root of three, okay? We know what the long side is, so we can put that in here. Nine is equal to our short side times the square root of three, okay? We divide both sides by the square root of three so that we know that our short side is equal to nine over the square root of three. But we all know that we can't leave a radical in the denominator so we need to get rid of that. And I'm just going to work this way, which I know is probably strange, but we're just going to work it out, right? To get rid of this square root of 3 in the denominator, we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, which is basically multiplying by 1, right? So that tells us that 
9 times the square root of 3. And what's the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? Remember, when we multiply a square root by itself, or basically square a square root, we are getting rid of that radical. So the answer is just 3. Now we can reduce this 9 and this 3 here, and that tells us that 3 times the square root of 3 is our short side. Okay, so let me see if I can squish it in here. 3 times the square root of 3 is our short side. Okay, now we've got our short side, we can find our hypotenuse, right? Because our hypotenuse equals two short sides. So our hypotenuse, which we've been looking for this whole time, or the radius of our triangle, therefore the radius of our circle, is 2 times the short side. So 2 times 3 times the square root of 3. Okay, so therefore our radius is equal to 6 times the square root of 3. All right, now knowing that, we're going to come back around here and plug it into our formula. So the area of our circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Well, our radius is 6 times the square root of 3 times 6 times the square root of 3. Okay, our area of our circle is equal to pi times, well, 6 times 6 is 36. And we've got the square root of 3 times 3. Well, the square root of 3 times 3, we know is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So the area of our circle is pi times 36 times 3. The area of our circle is equal to, if we get our calculators out and plug that in, we'll know that 36 times 3 is 108 pi. So we've used our triangle here and the information we were given about it to solve step by step through this 30, 60, 90 triangle for our radius. Radius of our triangle was our radius of our circle. Okay. And then using our radius, we were able to come back around, plug it into our formula and solve for our area. Good job. The next thing we're going to talk about regarding circles is the length of an arc. Recently, we've been talking about the degrees of an arc, right? If we start with a central angle, we know that the central angle is equal to the degrees of this arc, right? And vice versa, the degree of this arc is equal to the central angle. We know that that's the part of the 360 degrees that it takes up. But now today we're going to talk about the length of an arc and what that is in reference to is not how much of the 360 degrees it takes up. It's actually in reference to how much of the circumference it takes up. So our circumference is a length. We want to know how much of this length is taken up by this section of the arc. Okay, How much of that circumference? How long is this if we were to cut it out and lay it flat? on a piece of paper. The formula for this is the measurement of this arc, okay, divided by the 360 degrees, so what portion of the circle, and then times 2 pi r. Using this formula, we find the length of an arc. So let's just look at model 1 for now. I'm on page 34, and it tells us to find the exact length, so we're using pi, and no substitute of a 60 degree arc, okay, in a circle with a radius of equal to six inches. All right, so let's plug in all this information into our formula and let's find the length of our arc, okay? So the length of our arc, that's how I'm gonna write it, all right, is equal to our 60 degree arc divided by 360 degrees times 2 pi times the radius, right? Our radius is 6 inches, okay? We can reduce here. We have two zeros at the end of both, or we have a zero at the end of both of these, so we can get rid of them, and then we can reduce. What is 6 over 36 equal to? Well, that's the same as 1 sixth, right? And now what do we got inside here? What is 2 times 6? 2 times 6 is... 12 
pi inside of our parentheses, right? Now we can reduce our 1 6th and our 12. 6 goes into 6 one time, 6 goes into 12 two times. So the length of our arc is equal to 2 pi. Let's take a look at number 39. 39 reads, find the length of an arc of 40 degrees in a circle with an 8 inch radius. Okay, again, we're going to just plug it into our formula, right? So the length of our arc is equal to 40 degrees over 360 degrees times 2 pi times 8. Okay, well, again, we can get rid of our zeros. And we can reduce this fraction. How many 4s go into 4? 1. How many times does 4 go into 36? I'm sorry. Goes into 36 9 times, right? You're going to get more and more comfortable as you move along with these fractions, reductions, because we're going to do them so often. Now, inside of our parentheses, we can multiply our 2 times 8, which gives us 16 pi, right? Now, can we reduce here between 9 and 16? No, no, we cannot. So we are left with numerator times numerator gives us 16. Denominator times denominator gives us 9. 16 ninths pi. Now, I prefer that you leave the answer that way. We do not need to uh, simplify this into a mixed number. This answer is great. I love it. It's perfect. Good job. Let's look at one more problem before we move on to the area of a sector. And this problem is number 242. And it reads, a bicycle wheel with a radius of 26 inches rotates through an arc, okay? It's rotating through an arc that measures 80 degrees. Okay, so we've got our 80 in there. What is the length of the arc, the tire, that touched the ground? If we only roll this far on the ground, what is the length? How far did it roll? All right. We have everything we need to plug these, this information into our formula. So we have our 80 degrees over 360 degrees times 2 pi, and our radius is 26. Okay. Cross out your zeros. 8 goes into 8. Well, unfortunately, 8 does not go evenly into 36, though, so we can't reduce this just to a whole number. But we can still pull the 4s out of here, right? How many 4s are in 8? Well, we got 2. And how many 4s are in 36? Like we talked about before, there are 9. And then we're left with what we've got inside here. 2 times 26 is 54 pi. Okay. Well, oh, no, it's not 54 pi. Pardon me. 52 pi. Sorry. We all make mistakes, right? So it's 52 pi. 9 and 52 cannot reduce within each other, so we're just going to multiply 2 times 52 times and 9 times 1. 2 times 52 is 104 over 9 pi. And again, this is inches, but your answer is perfect. We do not need to reduce this. We do not need a mixed number. This is the exact answer that we're looking for. Good job. The next thing we're going to talk about is the area of a sector. And before we get too far into it, let's talk about what a sector is. Well, if we had a pie here and I cut you a slice, the area of the sector is how big a piece of pie, what is the area of the piece of pie that you're getting? How much of that sucker are you getting, right? That's the area of our sector. And it's the formula is very similar to the length of an arc that we just talked about. So to find the area of a sector, we need the measure of the arc, okay, either here or the central angle, over 360 times pi r squared, okay? So it's times what? What is pi r squared? Pi r squared is the area of our circle, right? So to find the area of our sector, we're taking the section that the sector takes up times the area of our circle. So that being said, let's just jump into 245. And it reads, find the area of a sector with a radius of 10 inches, okay? And a measure arc equal to 45 degrees, OK? 
Okay, that's our information. It's enough to solve this problem. So let's take a look here. We'll put our 45 degrees over our 360 degrees times pi times our radius squared. Again, that's not 10 times 2, but 2 tens, okay? Now, eventually you'll learn the reduction of these, but 45 does go into 360 evenly. So to reduce 45 over 360 is the same as 1 eighth, okay? And then what do we have inside our parentheses? 10 times 10 is 100 pi, okay? We can reduce 108, right? Not evenly, but we can reduce them because we can reduce them by four. Four goes into eight two times, four goes into 125 times. If we continue to multiply across, that gives us 25 over two pi inches as our answer, okay? So the area of our sector, the piece of pi that we have gotten for ourselves is 25 over two pi inches. The final thing we're gonna talk about in regards to circles is a segment and the area of a segment, okay? Here I have a cord going across this circle and it's broken this circle into two segments, right? This larger segment and this smaller segment over here. And most of the problems that we're gonna be working on are going to be revolving around this smaller segment here. So if I draw my circle slightly different and I put my, seg my cord here, okay? To solve for this area of that part of the circle takes a couple of steps, okay? But I want you to visualize it like this. Here's my center and here are two radii, right? If we look at it, it's kind of like a really big ice cream cone, right? Here's the cone, it's a triangle. And then here is our ice cream, okay? So if we think about it like that, then it's not too complicated. We're solving for the area of our ice cream, okay? Not the cone, just what sticks out above the cone. So to find the area of a segment, okay? So the area of a segment is equal to the area of the sector, which we just talked about, Okay, minus the area of the triangle or the cone, all right? So it's the area of the sector, the whole piece of pi, minus the cone. And that's just going to leave us the area of what's sticking out at the top or the area of the segment, okay? Because that's what we want. So we're going to find the area of the sector, which we just went over, and then subtract the area of our triangle, okay, or our cone, and that will give us the area of the segment. All right, if we look at problem 254, it asks us to find the area of the smaller segment, which here we've got a big segment, here we've got a small segment. So the area of the smaller segment created by a cord that is eight inches long, okay, in a circle with a radius of eight inches. Obviously not drawn to scale, wink, wink. Okay. But we know that we have an equilateral triangle inside of this circle, right? Because each of its sides are eight, eight inches, eight inches, two radius, eight inch cord. Okay. We're going to use that information to solve for our um, area of our segment. All right. Well, First thing we need to know is what is the area of our sector? So we need to figure out what is the area of our sector, which is our piece of pi. We know that in an equilateral triangle, all of the angles are the same. Therefore, three angles, these all are 60 degree angles, right? So our central angle here is 60 degrees. I'll try to write it in there. So we know that our arc out here is 60 degrees, okay? So that's what we're going to use first to solve for our area of our sector, okay? 
So the area of the sector is equal to 60 degrees over 360 degrees times, okay, times our radius, okay, squared pi. So we've got our radius squared, which is 8, oops, and 8, it's kind of sloppy, pi, okay? We can cancel our circles, and again, we want to, or cancel our zero, sorry, and then we want to reduce this. 6 goes into 36 6 times, okay? And 8 times 8 is 64 pi. We can reduce here, not necessarily with the 6, but we can pull a 2 out of each of these, okay? So 2 goes into 6 3 times, and 2 goes into 64 32 times, all right? So this gives us a 32 over 3 pi. 32 over 3 pi is the area of our sector. That's the first part of our problem, okay? Now we need to find the area of our triangle. I'm going to move my board just a little bit here. So the area of our triangle, okay, we need to pull our triangle out, and let's take a look at that specific. All right, so we've got our triangle over here, and just like before, when we knew our angles were all 60 degrees, still the same triangle, right? But here we've drawn an altitude and therefore cut that 60 degrees in half. We have our hypotenuse as being um, 8, therefore we know that the short side or the side opposite our 30 degree angle is half the hypotenuse, so that's 4. But what we want to know is our altitude, right? We need to find the altitude to find the area of our triangle. Well, the long side is equal to the short side times the square root of 3, therefore our altitude or our long side in this case is equal to 4 times the square root of 3, okay? Now we can put that into our triangle formula. The area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height, right? Well, our height is 4 times the square root of 3, and what's our base? Our base is 8, okay? Remember, our chord was 8. All of the sides were 8. This was an equilateral triangle. We can reduce this 1 half here, and I know I'm running out of board. Apologize. 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 4 2 times, okay? So we're all that's left for the area of our triangle is to multiply 2 times the square root of 3 times 8. So that gives us 16 times the square root of 3, okay? And that's the area of our triangle. We now have the two parts that we needed up here. We just need to put them together, okay? So the area of our segment, okay, is equal to 32 thirds pi minus 16 times the square root of 3. Now, looking at this problem, we can't solve it past this point, okay? We cannot subtract 16 times the square root of 3 from 32 over 3 pi. They are not like numbers, okay? So I know this looks like the strangest answer. Besides, this is inches squared. Apologize. Okay? I know this looks like the strangest answer you've ever seen in your math recently, but this is our answer, okay? The area of this segment is 32 over 3 pi minus 16 times the square root of 3 inches squared. So remember, when you're solving for the area of a segment, okay, the area of the segment is equal to the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. And that is all we have today for areas and circumferences of circles. Great job, everybody.